This is the first screencast in a series of three covering neck ultrasound. We will start with basic anatomy. The learning objectives for this ultrasound workshop include identifying the normal ultrasound appearance of the thyroid, larynx, trachea, and lymph nodes, being able to compare and contrast the common and internal carotid artery to the internal jugular vein, and being able to describe the characteristics of an abscess. For this screencast, we will focus on identifying the normal sonographic appearance of the thyroid, larynx, and trachea. The thyroid is a complex structure. It sits right in the midline of the neck between the two carotid sheaths overlying the trachea. When imaging the thyroid with ultrasound, we often start with a transverse view in midline. We can see the right thyroid, the left thyroid, and in the middle, the trachea. Notice the trachea has a thin echogenic line with posterior shadowing. This is due to gas filling the trachea. To the outer margins of the lobes of the thyroid, we see the right and left carotid arteries. We can also see deep to the trachea, a portion of the cervical spine. As we've seen in other bones, the cervical spine is represented by this thick hyperechoic line with posterior acoustic shadowing. If we focus on the left lobe of the thyroid in a transverse view, we again see the trachea at midline and the left thyroid. Lateral to the left thyroid, we see the left carotid, which is nice and round and will be pulsatile and incompressible. Lateral to the carotid is the jugular vein. Notice the jugular vein in this view is somewhat compressed. It is going to be less pulsatile than the carotid artery and with increasing pressure will show an increased degree of compression. Taking a second look at the left neck, we again see the trachea midline, the left lobe of the thyroid, the carotid artery, in the internal jugular vein. Between the internal jugular vein and the carotid artery within the carotid sheath is the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve in this instance is quite small and difficult to definitively resolve on ultrasound. Now take a moment to look at this image, orient yourself to the various structures on the image, and decide which answer correctly assigns the number to the structure. In this case, B is the correct answer. We can see on this image, the thyroid represented to the left of midline from the trachea. And in this case, somewhat deep and lateral to the left lobe of the thyroid, we see the left carotid artery. If we look at the thyroid in a longitudinal dimension, we can see more of its full extent Notice you have a CT of the neck for correlate on the right-hand side of your screen. Deep to the thyroid, we see the trachea. Again, the trachea is represented by this echogenic white line with posterior shadowing due to gas within the trachea. The left thyroid overlies the trachea and can be seen as a enhancing structure on the CT. When performing an ultrasound of the neck, we often evaluate the submental region and the muscles in this location. The primary muscles that we can easily identify are the digastric muscle, the mylohyoid muscle, and the intrinsic muscles of the tongue. Here is a transverse view of the submental region. We can see the anterior bellies of the digastric muscles, the hypoechoic mylohyoid, which is thin and lies just under the digastric muscles, and the intrinsic muscles of the tongue. Again, we can see the anterior bellies of the digastrics, the thin hypochoic mylohyoid muscle, 
and the intrinsic muscles of the tongue. When we correlate this to an MRI of the neck, we see very similar configuration of the muscles. The MRI shows hypo-intense digastric muscles with a thin mylohyoid muscle and the intrinsic muscles within the tongue. Take a moment to orient yourself to this ultrasound image and decide which muscle the asterisk overlies. The asterisk is overlying a digastric muscle, specifically the right anterior belly of the digastric muscle. Again, we have the anterior bellies of the digastrix, the mylohyoid, and the intrinsic tongue muscles. If we move our ultrasound probe inferior along the chin to the chin neck junction, we get to the level of the hyoid bone. On ultrasound, the hyoid bone appears as a thin hyperechoic line with posterior acoustic shadowing as we see with most bones on ultrasound. If we orient our, our probe into a longitudinal or sagittal plane and we image below the hyoid bone, we see the laryngotracheal structures. I have provided you with a diagram of the larynx and a CT of the larynx for reference. This is an ultrasound of the larynx at midline below the hyoid bone. If we zoom in on this image, the various structures start to come into view. We have thyroid cartilage along the superior margin of our image. We have the cricoid cartilage in the middle of our image. We can see tracheal rings below the cricoid cartilage. In between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage, we have the cricothyroid membrane. An important anatomic structure for accessing the airway in emergencies. Deep to these laryngeal structures, we see reverberation artifact and mirror image artifact. That is due to the presence of gas within the trachea. The arrows here outline that reverberation and mirror image artifact. Take a moment to look at this ultrasound image, orient yourself to the various structures, and decide which number overlies the cricothyroid membrane. In this image, the thyroid cartilage is represented by the number one, the cricothyroid cartilage is number three, and the cricothyroid membrane is number two. The number four overlies a tracheal ring. Again, thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, tracheal rings, and cricothyroid membrane. Now let's look at the laryngotracheal structures in a transverse orientation. Here we have a CT of the thyroid cartilage and the larynx. When we compare that to ultrasound, we see many of the same structures. We have the thyroid cartilage exteriorly. In this case, the thyroid cartilage is echogenic, similar to what we see with bone, but because it is not calcified bone, the ultrasound can penetrate it and we can see structures deep to the cartilage. Deep to the cartilage, we see the vocal cords or the true vocal folds. In the center of the image, we have the larynx. The larynx is filled with gas, and because of that, it is represented by an area of shadowing. In summary, the thyroid is a homogeneous solid organ which can be easily characterized with ultrasound. It bridges the midline of the neck with right and left lobes. Lateral to the thyroid, we can see the carotid arteries, and lateral to the carotid arteries are the jugular veins. When you evaluate the submental region with ultrasound, you can see the digastric muscles, the mylohyoid muscle, and the intrinsic tongue muscles. And this is a place where you may find adenopathy or abscesses. With ultrasound, we can evaluate the larynx and the trachea, 
and we can resolve the cartilaginous structures including the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, the cricothyroid membrane, and the rings of the trachea.